there are a lot of options that are available to insureds, to policyholders to transfer their risk. It's an area that the insurance industry sees as a growth area. There's a remarkable number of new policies that are coming out. Uh, not only new policies, but are options that you can add on to coverage that you have. You can buy a suite of policies, you can buy a standalone policies, you can what I call bolt on to your regular coverage in terms of adding coverage specific for the question of cyber risks, data breaches, and other things that can affect companies in uh, the business world today. You can transfer it as an additional insured so that you can be added to someone else's policy. You can add others to your policy. You can transfer it through indemnity agreements, uh, which happens quite frequently in, in corporate transactions. And all of these things can not only be transferred in that sort of alternative fashion to insurance, but insurance can be a backstop for it. So for example, if you have an indemnity agreement by which you promise to take on the liability of another company, you may be able to get that covered by your insurance. Under your traditional commercial general liability policy, for example, if there is a transfer of tort liability, there's something called an insured contract. So that if you have taken on the liability of another company, then you can go to your own insurance company and get that covered. Now, that may be specific to property damage and bodily injury under your policy, but it's an option that's out there and it's something to consider in terms of if you'd like to have that done for personal and advertising injury, or if you'd like to have that added into uh, a more standalone cyber policy to keep that option in mind such that if you're a company that agrees to add others as additional insureds, or if you agree to indemnify others, you should talk with your insurance provider, talk with your broker about the best option for having a backstop through your own insurance for those obligations contractually. We've seen in the last, um, last period, you know, short period of time, some big decisions from uh, high level appellate courts. We've got the Ninth Circuit, the Eighth Circuit. So the Ninth Circuit is here in California and governs uh, much of the West Coast. And in a decision, uh, the Netscape decision, there was a question, is there coverage under a CGL policy, the advertising injury section, for allegations that uh, Netscape had done things, I don't remember exactly what, but the allegations were of the nature that your smart download feature and other things in terms of what you were reviewing in terms of data that was being stored and being provided through the program, well, that was an invasion of privacy and a whole host of other parade of horribles. And the Ninth Circuit said, yes, that is covered and found coverage for the company, which was really a great decision interpreting the scope of advertising injury, and in a coverage that is within virtually every CGL policy. And again, so I think about that when I sell customers and I tell clients, you should think about going to that type of coverage because it's broader than you might think or you may have been told. The Eighth Circuit, again, a very recent decision, reversed the trial court, said, yes, there's coverage for loss of use of tangible property because of these allegations that the computer couldn't be used for maybe with spyware or whatever it was, things like flash and other things that are sort of normal to the computer industry. And that was another big decision, reversing a trial court decision saying there is coverage there. And so I think looking at those two decisions together and combining with other decisions that are favorable, like the DSW decision, finding coverage under a crime policy, you're starting to see courts recognize that what may have seemed newfangled a few years ago and may have seemed different and not as understandable is understandable. These policies do provide coverage there. Even if there's not a separate section saying we're providing this specific coverage for the new world of the internet, that if the coverage, the basic coverage agreement can be read to cover the claims alleged, there's coverage there and they don't have to shy away just because it's a seemingly new area in terms of the types of claims being alleged. And I think that that's a, a great trend. If you think about the recent hacking attacks that have happened, just think back to as it related to WikiLeaks. And all of a sudden you had a group of, a, a group of hackers who decided they wanted to put an attack on MasterCard. They wanted to put an attack on PayPal. And those companies certainly have good security and withst withstood it fairly well. But I don't think that that will be the end of the cyber warfare, the cyber attacks uh, that we see, maybe I shouldn't say warfare, but the incidents of that nature that we'll see, I think will increase. And I think that when people recognize that 
at $202 as the current estimate for what it costs you for replacing or, or suffering a data breach for each credit card record and understanding the amount of money that's at stake when you, have, when you host thousands if not, mil not millions of credit card records that this is something that's serious and a lot of people think in terms of insurance and that's traditional they think of your obviously your slip and fall coverage you think about maybe your basic property damage maybe you think about your directors and officers coverage but this is a real and serious area uh, where you've got the Department of Homeland Security ramping up cybersecurity the government taking it more seriously and more attacks we hear about every day and so it's something where companies may have thought well this will never affect me and now I think that people are starting to recognize this may affect me and that will really make changes in terms of the litigation going forward and of course the implications for insurance which always follows how the litigation goes forward. As again I'm with Dickstein Shapiro, I'm counsel in the Washington DC office. We've got offices uh, in DC, in LA, and in New York that specialize in insurance coverage. And one of the nice things about our practice is that with 70 some odd lawyers in the coverage practice alone, we only represent insureds and policyholders. We don't do any work for insurance companies. And so there's never a risk of can we take on this case or do we have sort of potential conflicts of interest in terms of our client base. We only represent insureds. Uh, we've recovered over $4 billion in insurance since 2007 alone. Uh, we're an aggressive firm. Uh, we've made the law in a number of areas, and we're really a leading firm not only in cyber coverage, but in other coverages as well. I mean, it was great to see Law 360 recognized us as one of the leading practices. It was really nice to be recognized for that. And we, all 70 of us, work together and trade resources and knowledge and really bring uh, quite a front with a deep bench to the question of getting coverage claims resolved whether it be through litigation or through negotiations, mediations, or recommendations about coverage, um, we really bring quite a strong resource to our clients.